know why the loading area is in the southeast area. Did y'all locate that in any other place? Uh, you see the, the loading door there, the back of the sort of loading area. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily a stock room because they try to keep everything on the floor these days, but it, it's basically where the product enters and leaves the store. Um, and, and the scissor lift is used to take the product off the truck. Um, and if you look at the, the layout of the site plan, uh, in, in order for the truck to actually get there, that's just you know, it's kind of where it's got to be. It's important part. And I, I did mention earlier, but the, the scissor lift that they use is a stationary scissor lift. It's not a mobile scissor lift. Around and see the ground, and they have to. I guess its location is determined on where the truck can get to. So they're right there in front of everybody, 365, which is not, <laughs> not the best thing. They got to lower the step down and go back the cart off the have room behind it. Mm -hmm. It gets in the challenge. It doesn't sit up. It, 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 it's upgraded. Right, right. So have y'all spoke with staff? Or staff, have y'all spoke about this item? Didn't come to a, and well, I was on the impression it was a mobile scissor slip that was simply parked there. No, no, um, but is it below grade when it's parked? It doesn't go all the way down to one, but it is. It has safety rails around the platform also, doesn't it? On the side, I believe. Yeah, and so then you've got those sticking up out of the parking lot all the time. And the ballers will be Right. And it's four what about possibly moving it more behind the store in that area there and getting it further back? We can look at that. I'll, I'll have to look at how you know, the truck got to be able to back up plus two. Right. Well, if you were to move it back just say to the corner line of the building, mm -hmm. then it could back in, but even it would be able to back in from Hall Street and into that area. Uh, it's right now it's going to be backing up to the actual side of it, isn't it? Not the, it's going to be the short side of it, not the long side. Right, it backs up to the short side is how they, they own them. Yeah. So we can, we can look at rotate it. We can look at and move, you're saying move it further. Yeah, just right along the building way. line. So, so it sits behind the building mm -hmm. where you're looking at it from the front. And then and he could come in and back, come in and back into it that way. And not even have to get up next to the building. Obviously, we would have a problem with that so long as the truck can actually get to that point. Exactly. And you could screen it on two sides. You could screen it on the on the uh, two sides away from, uh, so it's screened from the public. Let me ask a question. Follow up question. Um, in the South Marshall Street, is that actually public road that people can access? Yes, it is. It is. That's you consider it. Yeah. You considered using that to access your facility for loading. You can, you can actually mirror the whole situation of South Marshall Street. Your trucks won't be visible at all. They can come in, load and load and go. New Marshall. Right. We had some discussion with our initial meeting with the city council, and the condition of South Marshall is, yeah, that was not in very good shape. And they would, would ask us to repay whatever portion of South Marshall that we would utilize to get our truck back. And we went back to the developer that to start the cost of repaving South Marshall Street. Um, starting to get a little more than what. Well, that would have, well, you could look at If you could use South Marshall, you can also reduce the parking. So you may have a little bit of anything saving on the actual property where that could be. I mean, I don't know. That might work or not. <laughs> and there's two issues there. Um, one, there's, there's still some uncertainty as to whether all of that is still a public right-of-way, uh, whether it was closed by council and never vacated with the deed of back to property owners, or if it's still public right-of-way. The other one is just like it said, it is a substandard road, both in terms of its width, 40-foot uh, right-of-way, narrow pavement, but more importantly, it is not built um, to hold heavy trucks, and it is not in particularly good shape, and so the road would probably have to be completely rebuilt. That was one of the early scenarios of this development scheme that we were looking at. And at that point in time, we were looking at conventional loading docks um, on the back side of the building and trying to figure out how best to utilize it. 
the concern was paid by on South Marshall and also the narrowness, the truck getting in and out of that from 122, making that corner. Um, so we were trying to work it, or they were trying to work it so the truck enters and exits off the South Hall. Um, and then they ended up with the design that did away with the loading dock completely. And then I discovered the scissor slip. And I thought it was a mobile one that unloaded off the truck and they rolled it with the merchandise into the building. And this was simply the parking area for it. Um, the fact that it is below grade helps. Um, the whole intent of that part of the regulations has to do with aesthetics and visibility. Um, just like you would screen the dumpster and other service areas, scissor slip is a service item, should also be screened. Going below grade helps. We still have a minor issue with the bollards, but I agree if it can be backed up to, toward the south property, um, closer to the dumpster, maybe between the dumpster and the building, so it sort of blends in with that service area of the building, and maybe the bollards would be not too unattractive. Um, maybe it could work, but I think there's several possibilities there where they can you know, at least comply with most of that code requirement. Well, actually, if they were to come in and back up to it, with that way it would actually free up a couple more parking spots in there where you have to have that turn area for the, uh, where you've got that striped area for protection of the truck there, then you could free up a couple more parking spots. Well, that's mainly for the turning of the truck coming in the drive. Right. Mm -hmm. As long as that driveway doesn't move, the truck's still got to come if, he, if, if they were to change it and put it back on the back corner, they may have to change the route of the truck. It may have to come in at the main entrance there, come in and then back into it. So it would not have to, it would be covering the, the dumpster area there instead of uh, covering the parking spots. And there's a program called Auto Turner that we have to run to see ah. whether or not it's that. Um, may I ask you one question? Sure. Um, and you distributed two site plans, two drawings tonight. Uh, it looks like the landscape plan is using an older version of the parking layout. We made several revisions <laughs> over the last week, and the landscape plan was completed a few weeks ago before we made the, the revisions to that front parking area. So but the spirit of the landscape, the number of trees wouldn't change. We just increased their separation. And y'all have been down to Harvey's and looked at that, what they did with the with the sidewall decoration and everything with the over 50 foot walls, and that, that turned out to be a very nice uh, situation and that, to, to alleviate that. And I, I don't think it's very cost prohibitive. I don't know exactly what it costs, but uh, certainly better going in and putting windows in or anything like that. You mean the, the murals? The murals, right. That was discussed to me in the same hour. Right. Probably discussed it. <coughs> um, and you said the landscape plan is using an older version of the parking lot. Metal exposed, feeding the building. Is there any plan to put some landscaping for shield? Um, we don't know what that adjacent property is going to do eventually. Like, I don't. Right. It's it's zoning. It's saying in one. So I mean, we weren't showing any screening on that portion of the, the building at this point. That's what it looks. But at this current time, it is open all the way through to the neighborhood on the back side of the street. Mm -hmm. So that I would recommend some visual screening, that's, that's not going to be attracted to the whole. Some large trees there. Yeah. Exactly. Shrubs in front of it, whatever. Right. Tall, tall trees. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be a problem. No, that shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, architecturally, the, the front facade, it shows, it almost looks like it wants to have different planes, but what I'm seeing is, I think it's just simply like expansion joints that are shown in the stucco above the window areas, but they don't go all the way down to the to the, to the sidewalk. Those lines that are drawn, the vertical lines <clears throat> between the two lower. That's not two different planes, is it? Are you is it just an extension control joint or expansion joint? I imagine it would be, I'm no architect, I imagine that would be an expansion joint. That's all it is. That needs to, that needs to at least continue all the way down to the sidewalk. That line that's shown in between the two, where the two windows are. Okay. That, that vertical line, that needs to. 
All right, are there any other questions for the uh, presenter? I have a question. So your HVAC units are going to be on the ground level? So they'll be on the pad. So, what, well, it wouldn't be more cost effective to do rooftop units? Uh, we're constrained by prototypical plans. Um, they are coming out in here with, with prototypical plans where the HVAC units are actually on top of the building. Um, but at this point, we don't have the we've never put them on top of the building. Um, and that's you know, something that we're kind of bound by. So that's what we were talking about, uh, putting shrubs to trees. Cover. That's what we mentioned. We would be willing to put some trees uh, to the south of those HVAC units. If you look on the site plan on the screen and in your packet, you see there's a fair amount of distance between the building and the south proposed property line. It's currently green open space. I think it's water management and water quality being addressed there. Um, right, the engineering has not been done to the detail level, but I think within that large area should be some room for some, perhaps some of the live oak trees that they're planting for the front of the building that could grow nice and large or mostly evergreen and could help cover that into the wall within a few years. Is that in here somewhere? Now you can add that as a condition of approval to that one variance item um, that the landscape plan reflect that. And then the landscape plan, I mean, none of these have been reviewed and approved for permitting. It still has to go through that stage. This is conceptual. We have some preliminary comments on the landscaping plan, but it has not been reviewed in detail yet. Probably because we knew the site plan was still changing. All right, any other questions for the uh, presenters? Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? <clears throat> 